Hello there. Today, I'd like to take you on an ASMR tour of a small but very interesting place, Lamb House. This graceful but fairly modest house is located in the pretty English town of Rye in Sussex. And it's notable because no less than three well-known novelists have lived there. Henry James, E. F. Benson, and Ruma Godden. This makes Lamb House an intriguing destination for writers and for lovers of literature. And so, in today's talk, we're going to explore the house and garden together. As usual, there'll be a slideshow of photographs to illustrate our tour, but you don't have to look at them if you don't want to. I will describe each room we come to, so that you can just settle down, close your eyes, and let my voice guide you. So, welcome to Lamb House. The building is situated towards the top of a hill, which leads up to the centre of Rye from the quayside. Rye is about two miles inland from the English coast but it's also the place where three different rivers meet and run down to the sea, which gives the town the feeling of a seaside destination. There are many fishing and nautical connections on display, and one of the prettiest roads in the town is called Mermaid Street. This delightful little lane, lined on both sides with picturesque old cottages, winds up the hill from the river and is paved with old-fashioned cobblestones which some visitors to Rye find quite challenging to navigate because they make for a rather bumpy walk. At the top of Mermaid Street, we can turn right into West Street, another pretty lane, where we'll see the 12th century church of St Mary and, on the opposite side of the road, tucked away in the corner of the street, Lamb House. It's a plain but noble-looking building, made of red brick, with tall, white-painted sash windows and a panelled front door painted black, and fitted with a splendid brass knocker. The house was built in 1722 by James Lamb, who was a local wine merchant and politician. However, the house became indelibly connected to the literary world in 1897, when it was rented by the distinguished American novelist Henry James. James was born in New York in 1843, but he had already been settled in England for 28 years when he moved into Lamb House. He'd previously seen and admired the place two years earlier, while on a trip to Rye to visit a friend, and he was delighted when it came up for rent. He described the house as good enough to be a kind of little, becoming, high-doored, brass-knockered facade to one's life, and he found great inspiration while he lived there. Several of his most accomplished works were written in Lamb House, including The Wings of the Dove, The Ambassadors, and The Golden Bowl. He also used the house in his fiction. It appears, thinly disguised, as Mr Longdon's home in James's novel The Awkward Age, where it's described as being old, square, red-roofed, well assured of its right to the place it took up in the world, suggestive of panelled rooms, of precious mahogany, of portraits of women dead, of coloured china glimmering through glass doors, and delicate silver reflected in bared tables. The thing was one of those impressions of a particular period that it takes two centuries to produce. As we shall see when we enter the house, this description by Henry James will prove to be rather accurate. So let's walk in now, through the front door, and begin our exploration in the entrance hall. This is a spacious, airy room, painted in white. Directly ahead, a wooden staircase, also painted white, with a dark mahogany handrail, leads up to the first floor while a window to the right lets in plenty of natural daylight. Today, 
the hall is sparsely furnished, but it features one detail that fans of literature will find particularly pleasing. On the wall, to the left of the front door, is an old-fashioned cast-iron umbrella stand, which holds two walking sticks. This is a common enough sight in an old house, and doesn't seem particularly remarkable, until you read the little label that's attached to the umbrella stand, and discover that both walking sticks once belonged to Henry James himself. He would always carry one with him when he went for his daily walks, and a black and white photograph on the wall shows him here, in the gardens of Lamb House, walking by the side of his friend and fellow novelist, Mrs Humphrey Ward, with a trusty walking stick in his hand. But although James loved Lamb House, and quickly settled down to country life in Rye, he also missed the literary buzz of London. So frequently, he would invite his famous literary friends to come and stay with him here, either for the weekend or for longer visits of several weeks. If we walk into the dining room now, through a doorway that leads off the entrance hall, we'll find the place where he would entertain these illustrious guests. The room has a light, elegant and wonderfully mellow atmosphere, created by the white-painted French windows that open out into the garden, as well as the beautifully soft shade of duck-egg blue paint that has been used to decorate the walls. In one corner, there's a pretty little fireplace, surrounded by blue and white Delft tiles. And above this, there's a large painting of Henry James by the portrait artist John Singer Sargent. This painting is actually a copy. The original hangs in the National Portrait Gallery in London, but it seems fitting that a full-size reproduction should hang in this room, where James held court over so many literary dinners. The portrait was painted in 1913 in honour of the novelist's 70th birthday, and it shows James as a larger-than-life presence with heavy-lidded eyes and a frank, intelligent expression. On the opposite side of the dining room, there's an alcove fitted with a sideboard where wine bottles and dishes could be conveniently placed during a meal. Above this, a small circular bull's-eye window set with many small panes of glass looks out over the garden and lets in even more natural light. James had both the sideboard and the window installed to make the room more appealing and more practical for entertaining his friends. And many of those friends are represented in the room by place cards laid out on the table, as well as piles of books on top of the dinner plates, which represent their work. The list of literary names is impressive. Edith Wharton, H.G. Wells, Joseph Conrad, Radcliffe Hall, G.K. Chesterton, Rudyard Kipling and E.F. Benson are all represented. For one of these famous literary guests, Lamb House would become not just a place to visit, but also, in time, a beloved home. After initially renting the house for two years, Henry James was able to buy it in 1899. And when he died 17 years later, he left the property to his nephew, who in turn rented it to the novelist E. F. Benson. Benson had been a very good friend of Henry James, and he was already a successful novelist by the time he moved into Lamb House. But his new home would provide him with the inspiration for his most famous and enduring works. He's best remembered today as the author of six hilarious novels detailing the exploits of Map and Lucia, two formidable middle-class ladies with burning social ambitions. Map and Lucia are polite but vicious rivals in their attempts to be society leaders in the small English town of Tilling. And Tilling is a fictional version of Rye. Miss Map's house, Mallard's, is also based on Lamb House itself, and it was described by Benson as Charming little panelled parlours with big windows, letting in a flood of air and sunshine. 
We'll encounter one of those charming little panel parlours for ourselves in the next room we'll visit, the sitting room. Wandering in through the door, we're immediately embraced by the rich, warm atmosphere of this square, handsome room, which is panelled from floor to ceiling in oak. The panelling was installed by James Lamb when he originally built the house in 1722, and it's been meticulously restored by the National Trust, who run the property. Like the dining room we've just visited, the sitting room also features a corner fireplace lined with pretty blue and white Delft tiles, and next to this, there's a large glass display cabinet that houses Henry James' original letter to E.F. Benson, written in June 1900, and inviting him to come and stay at Lamb House for the very first time. Several of Benson's own letters are also on display in this cabinet, as well as his original writing case. Let's walk across the entrance hall now, into another room that also has panelled walls, although this time they've been painted in a soft ivory colour. This is the telephone room, and it's so named because it's the place where Henry James kept his telephone. He was the first person in Rye to have a phone installed in a private house, a fact which the author was apparently very proud of, and he would use it to telephone his friends in London and invite them down for the weekend. However, this room also has a rather studious air, helped by a small selection of beautifully bound books that were once part of Henry James's own library. His collection was apparently extensive and was highly treasured by its owner. His butler, Burgess Noakes, recalled that Henry James was very careful with his books. We used to dust them together and never with anything but a silk handkerchief. There were bookcases in every room and he knew exactly where every volume was placed. The books add a further atmosphere to this lovely little chamber, which was also used by the American author Edith Wharton as a writing room when she came to stay with Henry James for several weeks. It was also immortalised in E.F. Benson's novel, Map and Lucia, as the little telephone room off the hall where Lucia hides Miss Mapp's prized Blumenfeld piano. The dining, sitting and telephone rooms of Lamb House are the only three rooms currently open to visitors on the ground floor. So let's walk up the carpeted stairs now to the first floor landing and enter the green room. This room is so named because all of the woodwork and panelling is painted in a beautiful shade of muted sea green. It's another wonderfully light and airy space, with two sash windows on adjacent walls that look out over the garden and the pretty rooftops of Rye beyond. Given its tranquil beauty, it's no surprise to learn that Henry James would sometimes write in here. This was his winter writing room, and between the two windows stands the handsome 18th century secretaire desk, where he wrote several of his greatest novels. Today, a revised copy of his work, The Americans, sits open on top of the desk, and it shows two pages that are covered with fascinating, handwritten corrections that were made by the author himself. On the opposite wall to the desk is another bookcase full of books, and another corner fireplace lined with Delft tiles. On top of the fireplace mantelpiece, a small shelf holds a terracotta bust of a young boy by the sculptor Hendrik Andersen, who was a close friend of Henry James and was also possibly his lover. There's an exhibition cabinet where you can see Henry James' gold pocket watch as well as the letter of application he sent to the British government in 1915, applying to become a naturalised British citizen. His application was successful but having already lived in England for 45 years, James was only to enjoy his British citizenship for a few months before his death in 1916. Moving on from the green room, let's walk next door into the King's bedchamber, which is the main bedroom in Lamb House. Like the sitting room downstairs, 
This is another very beautiful oak-panelled room with a warm, inviting atmosphere, and it's dominated by a handsome four-poster bed. Henry James and E.F. Benson both slept in this room during their respective residencies, but the most important person ever to sleep here was a king, not an author. In 1726, when the founder of the house, James Lamb, was still living here, a storm blew up out to sea, which drove a ship onto Camber Sands. Rye was the closest town to the beach, so the rescued passengers and crew were taken there, and it was soon discovered that the ship had been carrying none other than the king, George I, who was returning to England from Hanover. At the time, the recently built Lamb House was the finest residence in Rye, so James Lamb offered the king accommodation there and gave up his own bedroom, this room, for George I to sleep in. However, Mrs. Lamb probably wasn't terribly impressed with this arrangement, as she was not only occupying the bedroom at the time, but was just about to give birth. Nevertheless, she moved out for the king, and in return, George I agreed to become a godfather to the new Lamb baby, who was christened George in honour of the royal visit. On the opposite wall to the bed, there's a large gold-framed portrait of George I, to mark the visit, and he looks very resplendent in his powdered wig and gold and scarlet robes. On the adjacent wall, there's another much smaller photographic portrait of a different gentleman, also dressed in splendid robes. This is E. F. Benson, who settled down to life in Rye with great enjoyment after he moved into Lamb House, and became such an integral part of local life that he was made mayor of the town in 1934. The final room to visit is a little dressing room or closet which is bare of furniture and is dedicated to the restoration work that's currently going on at Lamb House. In 1950, Henry James' nephew donated the building to the National Trust, a British conservation charity who continued to let the house as a private residence on the condition that a few of the rooms were open to the public a couple of times a week. One of the National Trust's tenants during this era was another novelist, Rue Magodden, who is probably best remembered today for her novel Black Narcissus, which was made into a film by Powell and Pressburger, and for her children's book The Doll's House, which was turned into a popular television series in the 1980s. Today, the National Trust no longer rents out Lamb House. Instead, it's in the middle of a major refurbishment programme, which will continue to gradually restore the building over the next few years. The story of that restoration can be discovered in photographs and sketches that now hang on the dressing room walls, and also in a rather fascinating little model which shows the original garden room that was once part of Lamb House. This garden room was built by James Lamb in 1743 as an additional extension to his original house, and he used it as a small banqueting hall. While Henry James lived here, he used it too. It was his summer writing room, and E.F. Benson also used the room for the same purpose. He featured it by name in several of his Map and Lucia novels, as the place where Miss Map would hold her ambitious social gatherings, and surreptitiously spy upon her neighbours. However, sadly, the garden room was destroyed during World War II when it was hit by a bomb. The National Trust hopes eventually to rebuild it, and, for now, the miniature model on display gives visitors some idea of how this lovely building must have looked. Although the garden room no longer exists, its original site can still be seen in the gardens of Lamb House, which are just as charming to visit as the rooms inside. So let's leave the little dressing room and walk back down the stairs and into the dining room again, where we can pass through the tall French windows and go out into the garden. For all three of the famous novelists who lived here, the Lamb House gardens were as inspirational as the house itself and it's easy to see why. 
rambling around two sides of the building. The gardens are walled for privacy and contain many beautiful trees and herbaceous borders, as well as several tucked away nooks and quiet corners, which are the perfect places for a writer to sit and think. When he first moved here, Henry James described the garden in the following way. It amounts to about an acre of garden and lawn, all shut in by the peaceful old red wall, on which the most flourishing old espaliers, apricots, pears, plums and figs, assiduously grow. It appears that it's a glorious little growing exposure, air and soil, and all the things that were still flourishing out of doors were a joy to behold. This description is still recognisable today. There are still espaliered fruit trees growing against the old walls, while a profusion of flower borders fill the air with scent and colour. Neat, clipped topiary bushes add formality and structure around the edge of the soft green lawns, while an abundance of roses, fuchsias, dahlias and mallows bloom all through the summer. It's easy to see why this beautiful house and garden has provided such inspiration to so many writers. Both are enchanting in their quiet beauty, and while the novelists no longer live here, the place still feels like much more than a museum. Standing in the garden, in the green room, or in the dining room, it's still possible to feel a sense of how Lamb House must have been when it was both a beloved home and a creative haven. Writers still visit Lamb House today in search of inspiration, but thanks to the work of the National Trust, the house is now open for everyone to explore and for everyone to enjoy. I'll put a link to the official Lamb House website page in the description below the video in case you want to plan a visit to the house for yourself. In the meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed exploring the house with me. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to join me again soon for another ASMR adventure. Until then, thank you for your company. Goodbye.